Has your boss ever asked you to summarize complex data and you don't know where to begin? Trust me, I know the feeling. Summarizing large data sets may seem like a daunting task, but don't worry, today I'm going to show you how to analyze data without having to write any formulas at all, using Excel pivot tables. A pivot table is one of Excel's most powerful tools that makes analyzing complicated data easy. Today I'll show you four key steps to creating and maintaining pivot tables. So let's dive right into why they are so powerful and teach you how to create compelling reports using pivot tables. Let's say our boss sent over all of this sales data and asked us to summarize monthly sales by region by the end of the day. Now I could do this by writing multiple SUMIF functions, but that would take me all day when utilizing pivot tables would only take me a few minutes. First and foremost, we need to prep our data and make sure it's in the correct format before creating the pivot table. The data should be in tabular format and each column should have a unique header. You also want to make sure that there are no blank columns, rows, or cells in your data. Blank values within the data will cause errors when creating the pivot table. Now this step is very important. Double check to make sure there are no duplicate entries or aggregate calculations such as totals, averages, or subtotals in your data. When the pivot table references the data, it treats each row as a separate single event. So if there are duplicate values or aggregate calculations in your data, values will be double counted in your pivot table causing incorrect results. It's also important to mention if you have anything such as group cells or filters applied to your data, you'll want to remove them. You can do all of this after creating the pivot table. All right, our data is almost prepped and ready. The last thing we need to do is format the data as an Excel table. You can do this by selecting any cell in the data and then hitting Format as Table on the Home tab. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut and just hit Control T. Double check and make sure the data range is correct and hit OK. Now before we move on, I like to really quickly remove the table format because I personally don't like it and name the table. If you forget this step, the pivot table will still work, but it's best practice to format the data as a table because the pivot table will automatically update if new rows are added to the data. Now onto the fun part, creating the pivot table. Creating a pivot table is relatively simple. We can select summarize with pivot table under table design or go to the Insert tab and select Pivot Table. After selecting the command, the Pivot Table dialog box will open. Double check to make sure that the data table is selected, and then select where you want the pivot table to be inserted. I'm going to go ahead and insert the pivot table in a new worksheet and hit OK. Before moving on, I want to really quickly show you that you can also select Recommended Pivot Tables, and Excel will create a selection of pre-made pivot tables based on your data that you can insert directly into your worksheet. This can be really helpful when you don't exactly know how you want to summarize your data or if you want to use one as a starting point so you don't have to start from scratch. But for now, we're going to skip this and build our own pivot table so you can see how it's done. Here's what Excel will look like when creating your pivot table. It may look intimidating at first, but I promise it's not that bad. On the right, you'll see the pivot table fields window, which is where all fields will be added or removed from the pivot table. You will see all the fields from our data here at the top. To add a field to the pivot table, simply drag and drop the field into the pivot table area that you want it to appear. If for some reason you don't see this window and need to make an update to your pivot table, don't panic. You can go to pivot table analyze, select pivot table field list, and the window will reappear. Now before diving into our boss's request, let's go over where each area populates in the pivot table. The filter area adds the field as a filter toggle on the top of the pivot table so that the data can easily be filtered by any value within that field. The rows area adds the fields as rows going down the pivot table. The columns area is similar except it adds the fields values as columns going across the pivot table. These two areas typically contain fields that we want to summarize the data by. So for example, fields like month, region, or maybe even client. Last but not least, the values area. The field dropped in the values area is the field that we are calculating and is what's going to make up the majority of our pivot table. Typical fields that go into the value area are going to be number values such as sales, units, or expenses that we are aggregating in some way. Now that we know how the pivot table populates, let's tackle our boss's request to summarize monthly sales by region. Because we are summing sales, I'm going to drag and drop the sales field into the values area. Now we need to break out our sales by month and region. 
So I'm going to drag the month field into the columns area and the region field into the rows area to populate the pivot tables rows and columns. As you can see here on my screen, we have successfully summarized monthly sales by region in just a few seconds thanks to pivot tables. Now that our data is created, I'm going to format the numbers as currency values because we are summing dollars. Then I'm going to consolidate the data in the table by removing two decimal places and auto fitting the columns by clicking the top left corner of the worksheet and then double clicking any line in between two columns in the header. One thing we can do to impress our boss is to add the fields we didn't summarize by as filters by dragging them into the filter area. That way, if he wants to look at sales by a specific product, he can quickly filter the data by product that he wants to drill down into. So for example, let's say he wants to look at monthly laptop sales by region. All he would have to do is filter the pivot table by laptop. Now let's say our boss just sent over updated sales data and we need to make sure that the updates are reflected in our pivot table. To make sure the source data is up to date, we need to refresh the pivot table. We can refresh the pivot table by right clicking and hitting refresh or by selecting the pivot table analyze tab and hitting refresh here. As you can see, the pivot table values change to reflect the updated data. If we have multiple pivot tables referencing this data source, we can refresh all the pivot tables at once by going to the pivot table analyze tab and selecting refresh all. One last thing that's important to know when creating pivot tables. By default, Excel typically sums numeric fields added to the values area. However, if you don't wanna calculate the sum, you can quickly change the type of calculation in your pivot table. To change the type of calculation, go to the pivot table analyze tab, select the value field settings, and then simply choose any of the calculations listed here. For example, you can calculate min, max, or even standard deviation. But for this example, I'm going to select average and hit okay to calculate average monthly sales by region. Hopefully now you can see why pivot tables are such a powerful tool in analyzing large data sets. Pivot tables make it capable for anyone to summarize complex data without having to write any formulas. Now that I've showed you how to prep, create, and update a pivot table, hopefully now you're ready to create your own. If you like this video and want more, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on notifications to never miss a video.